Hello, my name is Siva Hermann. I'm working as an energy expert at your municipality in Sweden. And we are partner of the recent project, which aims at helping communities in the north to become more energy efficient and to use more renewable energy. In this presentation, I would like to talk about how to improve the energy performance of community buildings. And here is why you want to become more energy efficient. Yes, you will do that because you will benefit a lot from it. Let's say you are going to improve the insulation of your community building. What will you get? You will get, of course, energy savings, which will lead to reduced greenhouse gas emissions, higher energy security, reduced energy cost, reduced, reduced energy dependency. You will get better air quality. You will see employment effects, but you will also see that you will get a better comfort, health and well-being for the users of the building and you will improve the value of your asset. Then the question is, is there any potential in energy efficiency? Yes, it is. As you can see from the graph to the, uh, to the left, energy efficiency was the largest energy resource in a lot of countries in the last years. Okay, then the question is, is there still potential? Yes, it is. That you can you see in the right, uh, there are still huge amounts of unrealized energy e efficiency potential in all areas and specifically when it comes to buildings, the realized energy efficiency potential is small and there is still a lot to do. Okay, next question. Here is how you will do it. Let's have a look first uh, on the energy use in a typical community building. What you can see here is that usually space heating accounts for the vast majority of energy use. But you also need to know that any building, every building is different. So what you need to do is to find out about your specific energy demand. So how much energy do you use today? The first thing is to find out what type of energy you use. And here I mean you really need to find out about all types of energy use. Look at the records of energy use. Energy meter readings and builds. And here it's good to go three years back because you might have had warmer winter, uh, colder summer, so you need to have an average uh, about, let's say, three years. If you have records five years back at time, it's better. Um, it's not enough to know how much you uh, need uh, at the end of the year for one year. You need also to know uh, when you need how much. So you need to find out where you have your peaks in energy demand. So whatever you do, then you need to cover uh, the peaks. Um, and it might be most economic to cut the peaks and to set matters to just to cut the peaks. Uh, what you can do is you can ask for help from your energy provider, specifically if you have electric heating. Uh, they have lots of data when you need how much energy. So take help of them. Uh, and then compile all data you have, uh, write them down in a table so that you have a good recording uh, and a good overview about how much energy you do you use today and how much does it cost so that you ha can evaluate any measure you are taking, how much you will save then. Okay, where to start? Here it's also uh, it's a param pyramid which you would follow. Uh, the first thing to do is always to reduce your energy demand. And here the most important thing is to reduce heat losses. The next thing is that you will use the energy that you need more efficient and the third thing you could do is to choose a 
more environmental friendly energy source like renewable energies. When we are talking about reducing heat losses, you can, we are thinking about additional insulation, increasing air tightness and an effective ventilation, in best cases heat recovery ventilation. When we are talking about a more efficient use of energy, we are thinking about energy efficient electrical appliances, um, we are talking about uh, to avoid any unnecessary use, we are talking about managing consumption, we are talking about controlling. And when we are talking about choosing energy tr source, so you might consider to use a heat pump or to use bioenergy instead of uh, electric heating, for example. So, okay, but how to do it? The first thing you can do when you want to save energy is just to change your behavior. And here the potential for community buildings is rather high because often you use the building only a short period of time and often nobody is really responsible for just reducing energy needs. So what is happening? People will forget to switch off the lights or there is no clear re rules how to do it. So, behavior change could include switching off lights uh, and electrical appliances when not in use. It's also about like close doors and windows. But also if somebody is seeing that something, a uh, tap is dripping, uh, so this person should report on that to a, to a re responsible person. Then you can also think about physical improvements. We were already talking about insulation, uh, think about uh, space and water heating, like new boiler or heating controls. Um, then lighting is, no, is an interesting issue, um, but also water saving devices to taps or toilets. And as we uh, already said, choosing energy source. Solar heating or bioenergy are very environmental friendly solutions which also can be economic. Here are some examples how much you can save. Behavior change usually will save you at least 10% of your energy costs. Physical improvements here it it's it's difficult to say, but if you if you are talking about roof insulation, so a typical typically you would save between ten and twenty percent of space heating energy. Uh, ceiling gaps around windows and doors will also save you maybe ten percent up to fifteen percent, depending how the situation is in your building. And if you think about if you have old T eight tubes and you will replace them with lead, then you will save up to 80% of lightning electricity. It is a bit more difficult to talk about uh, replacing, let's say, oil with a heat, heat pump system or with uh, solar energy of any kind. This is very uh, dependent on the specific situation in your building so there's difficult to s give any concrete figures uh, and you would need to do an energy study on that. Do you have more questions? Please contact me here you have my contact information. Thank you very much for listening.